Gemini Taurus, what an interesting cusp. Very, very interesting. I have a lot of experience with this cusp, especially in the most recent past life, for sure. Where to begin? Um, every cusp is such an interesting meld of very different energies. In this case, we have literally the fastest sign out of all the signs. Gemini, speedy, quick, inquisitive, um, interested in thinking and talking and being interested. Curiosity is endless on uh, that side of the cusp. And then you have Taurus, literally, and this isn't an insult in any way, shape, or form. This is how the energies function. They are literally the slowest of all of the, the energies. And um, that's a good thing because Taurus has strength. It has solidity, fortitude, endurance. The ability to really get things done. And so, it's, what, oh, hold on, I have to get this right. <laughs> there we go, okay. Um, man, it, it's very interesting to find planets on this cusp. I mean, it's such a, a mix of, of intellect, of abstract thinking. Um, even if it's not necessarily Mercury, say it's uh, Venus, for example, on this cusp. Still, that person's going to be so, wherever Gemini is in the chart, that, it, that shows intelligence, and that shows keen insight and analytical ability, and quick, too, not, you know, one to uh, waste any time. Combined with literally the most pragmatic, practical approach you could have. So you have a mind that is very much focused on the bigger picture, on abstracts, and thoughts, and ideas, stuff that isn't tangible. And then you have, at the same time, this predisposition towards what you can see, what you can prove, what's tangible, what you can feel, you know, what interacts with your senses. Very interesting, very, very interesting, very different gifts, for sure. I would say one of the biggest challenges I found with this energy. I have a lot of friends who um, have this energy, especially with Mercury Venus. And I find that there's a lot of frustration with how slow you can perceive yourself sometimes. Again, Taurus's patience, their plodding steps is their gift. It, it should be nothing to be ashamed of. It's a beautiful thing. It gives them their own particular perspective, their own particular set of abilities that no other energy has. And yet, when you are have it, when you have a taste of that Gemini, it can't help. And not to mention, Gemini is thinking about everything all the time. You really can't help but think about man. I am can be really slow sometimes, either in comprehending other people or in maybe slow in say it's like Venus and Taurus on the Taurian side of this cusp, slow in warming up to people, and that can feel frustrating because your Venus and Gemini part really wants to get out there and meet people. Wherever this is, I find that, of course, just like any cusp, those two gifts are there. Those two different energies are there. And um, it can be very frustrating when you feel like part of you is so quick and part of you is so slow. I really urge you to not judge yourself. It's really important for Gemini to not judge in general, especially when this cusp comes into play. Because really where that's coming from is, you know, not just the Taurian plottingness, but also Taurian cynicism, Taurian depression, you know, dark feelings, dark thoughts. And um, it's obviously, it's not inevitable. We have free will, you know, the energies are what they are. We, we're, you know, we choose them in the first place. We make the best of them. And there's always a way to make the best of energies. There's no such thing as a bad energy. Even more challenging ones have their gifts that no other energy could possibly offer, you know. Um, for example, Mars and Taurus, that's a, that's a, one example of a challenging energy. And yet when a Mars and Taurus person really focuses their energies on something that's really worthwhile to them, they will succeed. They will not fail. They will continue. Yes, it's not quite as quick as say Mars and Gemini, but one step at a time. And that is, that's the beautiful gift of that. And it should be honored. Whatever timing it takes, whatever pace that goes at, that should be honored. And the less that you beat yourself up, the more energy you free up, and especially mental energy. And not to mention, you're going to make yourself feel a lot better, too, when you're not saying, oh my god, I'm so slow, oh my god, I'm so slow. 
it's it's like magic. It's like intention. If you repeat it, if you're saying it over and over again, and um, you start believing it. It, it, you create it. You know, you're gonna make yourself even slower simply by for one, wasting your energy that could be used to, you know, supporting yourself, augmenting yourself, at peace with yourself. And, um, that's just a spiraling, man. It, it, it gets out of control, and then, you know, you, you're beating yourself up because you're slower, and then you get slower because you're beating yourself up, and then the, it's just, it keeps going. And, um, again, Taurus is not stupid. Taurus is actually very intelligent, very reflective, very wise thinkers. Some of my absolute, absolute wisest friends are Taurus. And uh, what's beautiful too is they combine that love. And that's that's a really great gift to this cusp is the Geminian ability to communicate. The Geminian ability to articulate things. Feelings, thoughts, especially. Ideas. Combined with Taurian groundedness. Yes, the practical, pragmatic nature we are talking about before, but even more so the love. The love of Venus. The love that Taurus has to offer the world. That that beautiful, simple affection. Whereas Gemini can be so wrapped up in the world of the mind, on that mental plane of thoughts and, and intellect, and get really removed from the earthly plane. They can seem very distant, because honestly, Gemini and energy very much is distant. It's everywhere at once. It doesn't like to be trapped. Whereas that is in play, at the same time, Taurus is in play. And that's a great solidifier. That's one of the biggest gifts I find with this cusp is that Geminian quickness, the versatility, the adaptability, the intelligence, the cleverness, the wit, combined with Taurian love, combined with Taurian just pure good feelings and, and harmonious outlook. Again, that's Taurus at its best. At its best. Um... But it really does lead to wonderful things because when those two gifts mix, you have incredible writers, speakers of love, speakers of truths. I am constantly amazed by uh, my one friend who has Mercury and Taurus on this cusp, Mercury and Taurus. Uh, actually, no, I think about two friends that uh, have their Mercury on this cusp on the side of Taurus. And they have that beautiful ability to communicate directly with no frills and yet elegantly eloquently, and messages that are very simple, but very powerful, whether it's, you know, breaking down barriers about sex, or talking about how they feel, you know, it's a great gift to be loved by somebody on this cusp, romantically or otherwise, because that person is just going to be so loving, and, and also always be thinking of new ways to love. And always being thinking of new ways to express that love. It's a great gift. When you marry these two energies, just like any cusp, when you get those two energies to work together instead of pulling apart, one, you're a lot happier and a lot more fulfilled, but you're also finding new realms of happiness, new realms of of gifts, you know, especially with Gemini on this cusp, you are a great learner, don't fool yourself, you know, just because you have that Taurus doesn't mean, first of all, Taurus is a great learner too, they, they absorb things so much better than a Gemini ever could, and are able to commit it to their deep memory, it's not quite the emotional memory of Cancer, but that, that can serve them, you know, they have a great practical memory, I liken Earth energy as to growing a garden, it takes a while. It does, and it takes a lot of caring, a lot of, you know, weeding and uh, watering and, and patience. And a lot of hard work and also a lot of calm thought. you got to make sure you don't overwater, you can't underwater, you, you know, seasons have to be into play. But with time, that garden grows, that tree grows, and it just gets stronger and stronger and more resilient with time. And that's Earth energy for you. And so, with Taurus, the fixed Earth sign, man, when you commit yourself, when you commit your mind especially, to always be moving forward, to always be growing and progressing, you have absolute geniuses. Uh, da Vinci, for example, was um, a Taurus. And his, uh, funnily enough, his moon was in the house of Gemini. So, he, he, was, he wasn't on one of this these cusps, but he has both of these energies very prominent in his life. 
and uh, it's a perfect example of just how with steadiness, with focus, and very much motivation is important. And Da Vinci is an interesting note because uh, he flittered around. He fluttered around a lot, you know. Um, I remember he was working as a painter, for example, and he had a couple of paintings commissioned, but he just had to move on to the next thing that interested him. And that's very crucial for these energies to function. Honor that. Some other people are going to say, oh, you have to stick with something, which is really ironic for somebody with this cusp of energies, because with Taurus, you have the absolute utmost ability to stick with something and see it through. In fact, that's one of the challenges of learning when to let go, which is where Gemini comes in. This cusp, man, it's, it's a beautiful mix of, of can-do, will-do, ability and attitude mixed with intelligence. And that intelligence keeps you on the right track, focus. And that's really what it's all about, is finding what motivates you, what really interests you, what gets you talking, thinking, reflecting, what makes you grow as a person. Very often, I think you'll find it's something that requires the mind, but is also very practical as well. I don't know if you can hear me on that noise, it's just funny. Um, my little Taurus. Something practical as well, something artistic, very often. Taurus has a fine appreciation for the arts. Again, that's what Venus is all about, love, art, beauty, harmony. And um, with Taurus being so gifted with their hands, the earth, you know, earth elements are so gifted with their bodies. They just have a, a keen insight into how to use them. And um, with Taurus especially being the Venusian earth sign, man, when the mind and matter, you know, your body, when they mix and they're melding, they're, they're working together, incredible works are capable. You, you guys are capable of incredible works. Um, whether through writing, Gemini, through sculpting, crafting, music, Taurus, um, both really. I mean, anything that interests you. And often, often you know, do you know how Dominion energy works? It's a little here, it's a little there, it's very scattered. But I really encourage you to find your passions, to find what you're interested in. And uh, whether that's business too, Taurus is wonderful at business. And Gemini lends itself really well to being able to charm people, to talk to people, to communicate, get through uh, social barriers, get through any barriers really with Taurus there. Um, but whatever it is that, that interests you, follow it. And don't beat yourself up, you know, saying, getting caught in lower level Taurus, saying, oh, I'm not good enough, so-and-so's going to always be better than me. Comparing is an important thing to get rid of. We need to get rid of this whole idea that comparing people is just. It's, it does not work. It's not balanced, you know. It just doesn't make sense. Everyone has diverse skills, diverse interests. And we're meant to pursue those interests and develop those skills in our own way. And so don't beat yourself up. If ever you feel yourself being critical, lower level Gemini, feeling like you're, you're worthless, you can't do anything, let that stuff go. And imagine how much energy that costs to be negative, to rob yourself of happiness. First of all, that's a crime in itself, man. But to rob yourself of your energy too, because you're not going to want to go follow your passions if you think you can't do it. You have to think first, I can do this, I need to do it, I was born to do this. And then go about doing it, as simple as that, one step at a time. Don't listen to other people, it doesn't matter, I mean, okay, hear them out or whatever if they have something interesting to say, sure. So if, if they have positive encouragement, okay, hear them out, yeah. But if they're trying to dissuade you from being yourself, from following your dreams and, and really living life to the fullest, Ignore them and really ask yourself, do I need this person in my life? <laughs> but if you do, then ignore them. Ignore them, ignore them, ignore them. You are meant to focus on what interests you, on what motivates you. And to not conform to other people's ideas of what that is. And that way, that's where Taurian stubbornness really helps. That's where it's a really great gift because you can say, no, this is what I'm interested in. I don't care if it's not going to, you know, get me a job. I don't care if it's not going to do this, if it's going to do that. I don't... Whatever, that's, I'll find a way to make it work. My passion is more important. What interests me is more important. That's the combination that's best level for sure. And it's a great gift, it really is. Because, god damn, you guys are impressive when you, you've focused on what, you, what it is that you want to focus on and really have developed your skills to suit your interests. And it just gets better with time. That's what's beautiful, is that garden just keeps growing. As long as you are cultivating it with you know, true water 
And what I mean by that is water is emotions. You're, you're feeding your emotions in a healthy way because you're interested in things. You're, you're feeding your mind. They're, it's all linked. You know, you can't have an unhappy mind and have a happy body and whatnot. If your mind is interested in things, your emotions will fall into line. And when your emotions fall into line, everything else falls into line and life falls into line. And as time goes on, things just get easier and easier to understand, to arrange in your life, to grow. You grow more and more. Again, that garden, perfect metaphor for the ability for Taurus, especially combined with Geminian energy, to grow exponentially and in solid ways that could never be undone. So give yourself time. It's very important to give yourself time to let that garden grow. You know, first, more importantly, plant the seeds nicely. Again, and those seeds are what interests you. Weed the garden, make sure the soil is good. And by that, I mean, don't be negative. Don't bash yourself. If you catch yourself being critical of yourself and making yourself feel bad, go to where it feels good. A great Taurus friend of mine said that once. Amazing advice that's helped me so much. Where my mind has gotten away from me and I start criticizing myself and I go, Oh man, I'm, I don't know if I can do what I'm, you know, what I feel in my heart I'm meant to do and what interests me, I just don't know. And immediately I go, stop. See what's going on. Because <laughs> I feel it, you know, I feel, fuck. It, what? Like, what mind, what? What are you telling me? And at that moment, I just go, okay. And I go to where it's good. I, uh, I read something really cool today from a, a friend on Twitter um, that said, I don't, I'm paraphrasing, but basically, when in a difficult situation or if you want to maximize your happiness and positivity in life, imagine everything, the best that could possibly happen. And don't limit that. Don't think, oh, it could only be this good. <laughs> that's, that's really negative thinking. Um, truly imagine if you follow your interests, if you follow what really, really makes you happy to be alive, not just happy to be, but ecstatic to be alive. Ask yourself, especially in difficult times, how could this work out? How will this work out? What could be the best thing that could possibly happen here? Inspire yourself that way. Use your mind instead of letting your mind use you. That's one of the biggest lessons, if not the biggest lesson, with air and Gemini out of all the air signs especially, I find. Because Gemini has such a keen, analytical, critical mind, but it can turn on itself so easily. And it can turn on emotions in your body so easily. So it's important to just accept yourself exactly as you are, no matter what your energies are, but especially on this cusp. Because otherwise, this combination of, of Taurian, again, lower level, not inevitable, just got to work past it, be aware of it. That's really what it comes down to, being conscious of our challenges. Then we can surpass them. Because then we understand them. You know, you got to understand something to be really, to really work with it. But man, those lower levels of Gemini and Taurus, when combined, are really challenging. When you have that Taurian negativity combined with the Gemini nitpickiness. Not quite as nitpicky as Virgo, but it still hurts, man. Nitpicky, uh criticalness so it's just nitpicky in another way you know sorry Virgos I didn't mean to make it unfair <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to be nitpicky with, <laughs> with you <laughs> but man once you get past that challenge when you get your mind to work with you and again it just comes down to awareness look at your your habits if you find yourself breaking yourself down don't feel bad take all that energy and focus it in a positive direction focus it on awareness Focus it on, okay, so why did I revert to negative thinking? What happened in my past that conditioned me for that? What can I do to help me get past this? Once you get these two energies working together, you have a beautiful marriage of energies. The quickest, fastest, one of the most intelligent signs out there, energies out there combined with one of the absolute wisest, as per common sense, understanding of the world by your eyes, your ears, your nose, your taste, your feel. You have that sense and that sensual gift combined with the mind. It's incredible. It's an incredible cusp for art, for business, 
Anything that interests you, really. Truly anything. But I really urge you to plant that garden. That's what life's about, is growing. You know, we're, we're all meant to be growing. Even as we're decaying in old age, we're growing in other ways. So I really urge you to, to grow well, to do yourself that favor, do the world that favor. You get, you, you don't do anything helpful by breaking yourself down. If anything, you're making the world a more challenging place. And it's already challenging enough. Let's, let's work together by working with ourselves, the, our many, many selves, especially for those, with the, those, those of us with the lad Gemini. The more you consolidate yourself, the more you consolidate the world. And the world needs, needs you to do that. Needs everyone to do that. But when this cusp, those energies, are activated you know, at their highest level, that love and that wisdom and that knowledge and that, that genius combined is incredible, however it's manifested. And... It really makes the world a more loving, a more understanding place. Hmm. Yeah. Namaste.